Greetings, everyone. I hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day today. Wanted to talk to you about Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous, and go through the different spells that you get based upon the domain that you pick. Um, so first, we're going to start with, um, since this is based around the cleric class, going through the basic powers that you get zero through nine as a cleric. And then one by one, I'll go through all of the domains and tell you what spells you get based upon that particular domain. Keep in mind, for spell levels eight and nine, I'm only going to be able to give you um, community, good, and healing. Because it only allowed my main character to get up to spell level nine. My party members and any other mercenaries that I've hired, they only go up to seven. And I'm not sure if that's a cap that they've actually placed on the beta or if it's just that there's not enough XP available in order for you to be able to get that high. Um, but that unfortunately, that's the most I can show you. So for community, good and healing, we'll go all the way through nine. For all of the other domains, I'll only be able to go up to seven. But you will be able to see in the description for each domain what the names of each power or rather each spell is. And then from there, you can uh, probably Google to find out what they are if I wasn't able to list them. And from there, let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, level zero powers, nothing much to write home about here. Only one that you may use every so often. I think I used it a couple of times in Kingmaker was light, but all of the characters that I like to use in my party can see in the dark anyway with no problem. So I never really had to use this. The rest of them, yuck. nothing to really write home about here. All right, moving on to level one, Bane um, and to some degree Bless are both powers that you might use in the early game. Remove Fear is something that can be used a lot if you do not have a Paladin. Of course, Paladins get an aura that gives the same reduction or rather the increase to saving throws for Fear. So it makes uh, remove fear significantly less useful. Unbreakable Heart should be fantastic in this game. There's actually a lot of creatures I've run into that use mind affecting powers. However, some of the really, really daunting ones that have been debilitating for my party were not suppressed by Unbreakable Heart. And I'm not sure if that's a bug or if it's just not in the description for this power to make it clear what they do not um, deal with but specifically insanity could turn your party member against you for over a minute and putting unbreakable heart on a person who was affected by that ha had no effect whatsoever for me beyond that not much here that I actually use going to level two remove paralysis definitely something that you want to have on hand Paralysis is extremely annoying and there actually aren't that many things that will remove it and there's no time limit for paralysis. A creature will just stay paralyzed. So having this around or at least having some scrolls that allow you to do it is definitely useful. Um, bull strength. So you have things that can add either a strength bonus or a charisma bonus. Uh, wisdom based upon the type of party that you have. So that's useful. Of course, healing is always useful, but just keep in mind, if you have a cleric who is good aligned, they're going to get spontaneous healing, which is, let me go ahead and what's that a special ability? Yeah, they're going to get spontaneous healing, which means that you can use your power on any stored spell. So if we go back to the spell book, you don't have, I don't have to actually slot cure moderate wounds here. Any of these slots will just be available to use. There'll be a little uh, up arrow on that particular slot and it'll just have a heal spell that I can use. So you don't need to manually slot these if your cleric is good aligned. Um, so if you're using Soseo or you rolled a good cleric, you're fine. Uh, of course, Darren, it doesn't count because even though he's a healer, he's an oracle, which is not the same thing. 
Um, delay poison is of course good, but the communal version is by far more potent. So I don't bother slotting this. Um, hold person, if you see an enemy that is way in the back and you know that they're melee range, you can hold them to try to delay when you have to deal with them. This is especially useful for those types of creatures that like to rush past the tanks and try to go straight for the archers and sorcerers. You can use hold person on them before they even get started to help you figure out your strategy. Um, and that's most of what I use here. Bone shaker sounds good in theory. But most of the time when I try to pop it, it doesn't work properly. I never really use the summon monster type spells. So they're definitely good, especially as a distraction. Just because I don't particularly go over them doesn't mean it's not something that you might not find benefit from, just to be clear. Level three, shield from demon kind, really, really good. You face a lot of demons, of course, and this is just another tick that makes it easier to damage them. Resist energy communal, if you know what type of damage you're going to be facing, this is really nice. All of the remove spells have their usefulness. Um, there are other ways to remove most of these, like for remove disease. I think I set up Sela's lay on hands to be able to do it. So you have to decide based upon your party whether or not it's something that you want to add. Remove Curse, though, is <laughs> something that I definitely recommend. There are some really, really nasty curses in this game, and they're not always easy to remove. So having that available to pop on and honestly having a couple of scrolls available for it as well is definitely to your benefit. Anime Dead is something that I actually used a couple of times and... Um, worked really effectively as well. All right, and then at level four, restoration is always useful. There are a lot of enemies in this game that will damage your abilities. So having restoration, lesser restoration, and greater restoration is highly recommended. Holy Smite, if you happen to be on a team that does not already have a Paladin, of course, Paladins get access um, to this power. Uh, Chaos Hammer is one that I use a lot as well. There's a lot of good options in here. I never use Dismissal, even though it is very powerful when you realize you're dealing with a creature from another plane, because I believe you lose whatever loot that particular creature had. So you have to actually kill the creature if you want to be able to loot it. So because of that, I always ignore this. And then you can read through some of the other one. Greater Magic Weapon is also something I use a lot. Being able to increase the enhancement bonus is very powerful. So something I don't take from granted. And anything that's communal, you got to at least take a glance at it. Um, gaining immunity to diseases is not that useful, except when you're clearly fighting undead or ghouls and things of that nature. They're going to disease you a lot and damage your ability scores a lot. So having this available is useful for those particular types of fights. Moving on to level five, Cleansing Flames is something that I use a lot when I'm transversing the world map because, of course, your party gets tired, exhausted, and then you're supposed to camp. Well, instead of camping, I go ahead and let a surprise attack happen, and when the screen loads, I just pop Cleansing Flames immediately, and then it clears the fatigued and exhausted statuses from all of my party members. So it allows you to go a greater amount of time before you have to actually camp and rest. Breath of Life is, of course, good because it allows you to bring back from the dead recently slain party members. And you'll notice it doesn't require any materials uh, for you to be able to use this, whereas some of the later versions of this definitely do. And I'll note that when we get to it. Cleanse is good. It only works for yourself. But still, if you're someone who's especially in melee range and has a bunch of adverse conditions on yourself, it's good to be able to pop this on. Raise Dead is another example of being able to raise a party member, but you see it will cost a diamond for you to be able to do this. And those things are not cheap and I wouldn't call them plentiful either. So diamond, diamond dust, dinosaur bones, you wanna make sure you have a stack of those that you keep around. Serenity is nice as just a, a tick that can happen on any creature that you know is gonna be attacking on a regular basis, or really on the entire uh, enemy party that is gonna be attacking on a regular basis, making it easier to do damage to all of them at the same time. 
spell resistance, even though it only applies to one person, it's still a huge boost. So if you have that one main tank that you want to kind of rush in there, let them take all of the bad spells and then all the rest of the party trickles in. This is a very powerful way to be able to do that. Uh, and true seeing, there's a lot of enemies in this game that use displacement um, and a few that use invisibility as well. So having this, this uh, true seeing spell is actually very effective and definitely something that you want to have slotted. And then, of course, uh, Ward from the Unclean. So now instead of just diseases, it's sick condi conditions, diseases, and poisons on all of your allies. Very, very powerful for 10 minutes, especially depending upon what type of enemies you are facing. Oh, Break Enchantment is also something that's fantastic. Um, for all of your allies, it frees them from enchantments, transmutations, and curses. That... <laughs> It can absolutely be a lifesaver, depending upon the situation. Moving on, level six. Agus of the Faithful, fantastic power. Can um, make just about any character a tank that you want to have just rushing in there. Puts on shield, shield of faith, protection from arrows, displacement, resist fire, cold electricity, acid, and sonic for one minute per caster level. And that can be increased, of course, based upon what mythic options you take during your leveling up. So very, very powerful stuff. You get some mass versions of some of the boosts. So whether you need constitution or strength or charisma, you have more options now. Create undead. Um, I loved Bolt of Justice. This comes from me being an angel. Um, so it's uh, holy damage towards one particular creature and there are greater levels of this. Uh, ward from harm, uh, communal. So now it's just an even greater version of what we talked about before. Now it has nauseated and sickened along with diseases, poisons, ability damage and ability drain. Just absolutely fantastic protection. And then you can get true seeing communal as well as long as you're willing to spend the diamond dust. But it ensures the entire party is able to reveal any enemies that try to use displacement or invisibility spells, which again, very common. So it's extremely useful to have that on somebody. Oh, and Holy Him, um, uh, one of the powers that I guess I didn't mention before, all the, because it was domain power was prayer, but Holy Him is the upgrade for prayer, giving you a plus two luck bonus on your attack rolls, damage rolls, things of that nature. Very powerful stuff. It's important in this game to make sure that you're not just putting random bonuses on your party because a lot of bonuses do not stack. So when it says it's specifically a luck bonus, that matters because there's a difference between a luck bonus or a morale bonus or a sacred bonus or any any other type of bonus you might get. So you need to make sure that you're putting on different types of bonuses so that they will all work together. And then level seven. Let's see. Of course, there's resurrection. Um, there's uh, destruction, which does a ton of damage um, to one particular enemy word of chaos which i didn't use because i have a chaos creature that i use as part of my party but the, there are a lot of great options here based on what you might want to do i didn't play around with this level that much because I was stuck on, for the most part, having Resurrection and having Restoration Greater because I was getting my behind kicked a lot, so I needed it. <laughs> Level 8, it takes Angelic Aspect and makes it even better. Cloak of Chaos is also something that's interesting based upon what type of creatures you have in your party. Firestorm is something that I played around with a little bit. I like the utility of it that it can hit multiple enemies, but it didn't do all that great damage. But then again, I was not built to be a damage dealer. So your mileage may vary. Shield of Law is also something that I found very useful because a lot of the enemies that you face, they are not just evil, they are also chaotic, especially the demons. So having protection against both 
is really, really useful. And Shield of Law helps you do that. Storm of Justice is fantastic as well. Um, if you end up going the angel route, it's just like Bolt of Justice, but now it'll affect every enemy. And any power you can use that's widespread and still only affects the enemies, that that's definitely the way you want to go. And then finally, at level nine, Fortress of the Faithful puts Agus of the Faithful on your entire party. Absolutely fantastic. And it doesn't require any material cost. So this was a mainstay for me. And you see it's an hour. So just, just absolutely fantastic. Just great stuff. Then there are a bunch of other options here as well that I didn't really honestly get a chance to play with, but a lot of them look fantastic. Okay, that gives you the general overview of all of the different spells that a cleric will automatically get. Okay, so now that we've done all of the basic cleric powers, let's get into the specific domains and the powers that they provide to you. So let's start with the description of each domain. Air, you can manipulate lightning, mist, and wind and are resistant to electricity damage. So the first power you get is lightning arc. As a standard action, you can unleash an arc of electricity targeting any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. Then at 6th level, you get Electricity Resistance. You gain Resist Electricity 10, which increases as you get to level 20. And then you see the domain spells that you get as well have an air domain. Animal Domain. You can speak with and befriend animals with ease. In addition, you treat Lore Nature as a class skill. Animal Companion. At 4th level, you gain the service of an Animal Companion. Your effective Druid level for this Animal Companion is equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Artifice Domain. You can repair damage to objects, animate objects with life, and create objects from nothing. Aura of Efficiency. You can emit a 30-foot radius aura that grants your allies a plus 4 bonus. On all saving throws, it gets effects that inflict the fatigued or exhausted condition. At 8th level, your Aura of Efficiency grants you allies damage resistance. This damage resistance increases by plus 1 for every 3 levels you've possessed in the class. The Chaos Domain. Your touch infuses life and weapons with chaos, and you revel in all things anarchic. Touch of chaos. You can imbue a target with chaos as a melee touch attack. For the next round, anytime the target rolls a d20, he must roll twice and take the less favorable result. Chaos Blade. At 8th level, you can give a weapon you touch the anarchic special weapon quality for a number of rounds equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. With those particular domains, you get Lead Blades, Magic Fane, Protection from Law, which is very useful if you're running an evil party, and Shocking Grass, which you can use if you're in melee. Hold Animal, which I assume works similar to Hold Person. Protection from Arrows, the communal version of this is very useful. Protection from Law Communal. And Effortless Armor, which reduces the speed impact you have based upon the armor that you use and reduces the armor's check penalty. Both very useful, depending on the situation. Dominate Animal, Lightning Bolt, that's a mainstay for any video game. You can guess what that means. Dispel Magic, which is something I actually didn't use much in my playthroughs, but Considering how many enemies there are in this game that utilize magic, more than likely that was just a failing on my part and dispel magic when you identify positive magical effects that are happening on enemies is definitely something you should use. So useful to have this available to you. And then magical vestment if you need an enhancement bonus on your armor. Shout, which does sonic damage. You can summon a creature. Freedom of Movement, which was an absolute must-have in Kingmaker, but after playing through the majority of Act 4, I almost never had to use this power. I can't think of a single time I needed Freedom of Movement, so it might have lost some of its utility in this new game. And Restoration, which of course should be a mainstay in any party. Ability damage is very common. Acidic Spray, Beast Shape, which allows you to become a large bear. Cloud Kill, which I never used, but enemies use with <laughs> no hesitation whatsoever to disastrous effects. So I assume it's definitely useful to go ahead and put on an enemy squad and ways of fatigue if you want to apply the fatigue effect on your enemies. Level six, 
Banshee Blast, which does some damage and also panics enemies if they fail a reflex save. Chain Lightning, always nice to have. Disintegrate we talked about and another summon. And then finally on level seven, you have Animal Shapes, which allows you to turn all of your allies into large bears. You can turn your body into an air elemental, apply exhaustion to all creatures that are near you, and then Word of Chaos, which does absolutely horrible things to any non-chaotic creature in your presence, okay? So that goes through the first four domains. Let's now switch over to Charm. And if you look at the Charm domain, you can baffle and befuddle foes with a touch or a smile, and your beauty and grace are divine. Dazing touch. You can cause a living creature to become dazed for one round as a melee touch attack. Charming smile. At eighth level, you can cast Charm Person as a swift action with a difficulty class of 10 plus half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain plus your wisdom modifier. That gives you hypnotism, allowing you to daze all enemies within a 30 foot burst. Hideous Laughter, which allows you to select one enemy that falls to the floor with uncontrollable laughter. There are also a couple of mythic talents that tie in directly with this particular spell. So you can potentially make it really, really powerful. A uh, crowd control game changer later on in the game. Deep Slumber, which is also something that could potentially have disastrous effects on enemies. Just keep in mind that an enemy who is asleep will wake up if you hit them. Unlike, I believe, hideous laughter, I think if you hit an enemy while they're hideously laughing, they will still stay down. Level four, rainbow pattern, allowing you to daze a bunch of enemies within a 20 foot burst. Dominate person, does just what it says, allows you to make a humanoid creature your ally who was previously your enemy. Eagle Splendor allows you to give everybody in the party a plus four enhancement bonus to charisma. And finally, level seven gives you the one, the only insanity, which whenever it was used against me was just absolutely horrible. And judging from the description, it is equally horrible against enemies when you are able to use it well. Moving on, we have the darkness domain. You manipulate shadows and darkness, touch of darkness. As a melee touch attack, you can cause a creature's vision to be fraught with shadows and darkness. The creature touch treats all other creatures as if they had concealment, suffering a 20% mischance on all attack rolls. Moonfire. At 8th level, as a standard action, you can shoot a blast of divine moonlight from your eyes as a ranged touch attack against a single target within 30 feet. And here, I'll scroll down so you can see all of the spells you get with it. Death. You can cause the living to bleed at a touch, and you find comfort in the presence of the dead. Bleeding touch. As a melee touch attack, you can cause a living creature to take 1d6 points of damage per round. Death's Embrace. At 8th level, you heal damage instead of taking damage from channeled negative energy. Destruction Domain. You revel in ruin and devastation and can deliver particularly destructive attacks. Destructive Smite. You gain the supernatural ability to make a melee attack with a morale bonus on damage rolls equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Destructive Aura. At 8th level, you can emit a 30-foot Aura of Destruction for a number of rounds per day equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Earth Domain. You have mastery over earth, metal, and stone, can fire arts of acid, and command earth creatures. Acid Dart. As a standard action, you can unleash an acid dart targeting any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. Acid Resistance. At 6th level, you gain Resist Acid 10. This resistance increases to 20 at 12th level and continues to increase to the level 20. Evil Domain. You are sinister and cruel and have wholly pledged your soul to the cause of evil. Touch of evil. You can cause a creature to become sickened as a melee touch attack. Creatures sickened by your touch count as good for the purposes of spells with the evil descriptor. Sky of Evil. At 8th level, you can give a weapon touch the unholy special weapon quality for a number of rounds equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. 
Fire domain. You can call forth fire, command creatures of the inferno, and your flesh does not burn. Firebolt. As a standard action, you can unleash a scorching bolt of divine fire from your outstretched hand. You can target any single foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack with this bolt of fire. Fire resistance. At 6th level, you gain resist fire 10. This resistance continues to increase up to level 20. Glory Domain. You are infused with the glory of the divine and are a true foe of the undead. In addition, when you channel positive energy to harm undead creatures, the save difficulty class to half the damage is increased by two. Touch of Glory. You can cause your hand to shimmer with divine radiance, allowing you to touch a creature as a standard action and give it a bonus equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain on a single charisma-based skill check or Charisma Ability Check. Aura of Heroism. At 8th level, you can emit a 30-foot Aura of Heroism for a number of rounds per day, equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. I love that Aura, by the way. Heroism is a fantastic buff, and to be able to put it on your entire party without having to put it on singly, one by one by one, very, very good stuff. So starting from level 1, Burning Hands, of course, Melee Cone Attack. Sleep, which we've discussed. Stone Fist, which improves your unarmed strikes and does a small amount of damage. True Strike, which I used several times when I was playing Kingmaker, but never felt the need to use it in this game. Call Sphere, Call Sickening, Ray of Sickening. And Shield of Faith, which is just a small boost to your AC. Acid Arrow does good damage. Scorching Arrow, basically the same thing, just fire instead of acid. Blessed Weapon, which we've just spoken about. Blindness, which is a very powerful effect to put on the enemy, depending on the situation. And Bone Shaker. Fireball. And come on now, we all play video games. We know what this means. You set everybody in the area on fire. Always good stuff. Rage, similar to the Barbarian Power, except that you can put it on all of your allies as well. Soothing Mud, which allows you to heal ability damage in a small area. I never used it because it was only 1d4, but potentially it could be effective. Contagion, allowing you to put a bunch of different diseases on a particular enemy. Uh, Bestow Curse, allowing you to put a bunch of different curses on one particular enemy. Vampiric Touch, Melee Touch Attack. And Searing Light, Medium Rage, Evocation Spell. This power is bugged out, not particularly sure what it is. Control Fireball, just like Fireball, except it does not affect your party members, so very cool stuff. Innervation allows you to apply negative energy to a particular enemy, cause fear. Spike Stones, affecting both your party members and your enemies, but causing Spike Stones to come from the ground. Divine Power is a small luck bonus. And Unholy Blight, which basically allows you to smite um, non-evil creatures. Acidic Spray, Rains Acid Attack, Mind Fog, which makes your enemies take a negative 10 penalty on Wisdom Checks and Will Saves, potentially very powerful, Bone Shatter, Slay Living, Flame Strike, and Burst of Glory, which is a sacred bonus and a buff for all allies. Circle of Death, which attempts to just outright kill everybody in the area. Um, keep in mind, it does have a material component cost to it. Stone Skin, also material component cost, but an extremely effective way to provide some additional defense to you or your other party members. Summon Fire and Mental. Umbral Strike, which adds dark energy onto your weapon. And Create Undead, which summons undead for you. Can't wait to use that spell when I'm a lish. Harm, dealing direct damage to a particular creature and inspiring recovery, allowing you to heal or um, bring back from the dead a particular person. And then finally, level seven, turn yourself into an earth elemental, turn yourself into a fire elemental, add a holy enhancement onto your weapon, plus five at that. Um, power word blinded. This is on strike again, but more than likely, because I've chosen domains like death, darkness, destruction, you know, all in that same range. It's just that for one of them, Umble Strike came later than for the other domain. And Blasphemy, which does horrible things to any non-evil creature in the area. And finally, Destruction, which just flat out does a ton of damage to one enemy creature in particular. 
Flipping over to my main character now. Yes, good. You have pledged your life and soul to goodness and purity. Touch of good. You can touch a creature as a standard action, granting a sacred bonus on attack rolls, skill checks, ability checks, and saving throws equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Holy Lance, at 8th level, you can give a weapon you touch the holy special weapon quality for a number of rounds equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. He also has community. Your touch can heal wounds and your presence instills unity and strengthens emotional bonds. Calming touch. You can touch a creature as a standard action to heal it of 1d6 points of damage plus 1 point per level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Guarded Hearth. At 8th level, you could create a ward that protects a specified area. Creating this ward is a full round action. All friendly creatures in the area receive a sacred bonus equal to your wisdom modifier on all saving throws and attack rolls while inside the warded area. In Kingmaker, this Guarded Hearth was the best boost in the game. I don't know if that's the case for Wrath of the Righteous, but in Kingmaker, this man, that boost, once you laid it down, that was it. <laughs> it was absolutely a wrap. Healing domain. Your touch stays off pain and death, and your healing magic is particularly vital and potent. Rebuke death. You can touch a living creature as a standard action, healing it for 1d4 points of damage, plus one for every two levels you possess in the class that gave you access to this domain. Healer's blessing. At sixth level, all of your cure spells are treated as if they were empowered, increasing the amount of damage healed by half, 50%. This does not apply to damage dealt to undead with a cure spell. All right, looking at the spells. Bless, giving you a small morale bonus. Protection from evil, absolutely fantastic. Basically, anytime I'm going up against demons, I pop on protection from evil communal and uh, protection from chaos communal to give me as much uh, protection as possible. Very, very good stuff. And remove sickness. There's a whole lot of things in this game that'll give you a disease. So having this is also very useful. And protection from evil communal on level two, a restoration lesser. All the restoration spells are extremely useful. And protection from alignment, which was not all that useful to me running a good party. I never had to annihilate a bunch of good aligned people. But if you're running an evil party, this potentially can be very useful for you as well. Moving on to spell level three, Cure Serious Wounds, of course, very powerful, and Prayer, which gives a small luck bonus to attack rolls or damage rolls, also very useful at the time that you get it. Protection from Evil, Communal, obviously very powerful, especially if you know what type of energy you're gonna be dealing with. Neutralize Poison, Poison is nothing to play with in this game. And Force Repentance, which I never used, but based upon the description, is something that can be very powerful depending upon the situation. I don't know why I didn't get any domain spells at level five. It's actually kind of weird to me. Level six, Stone Skin Communal. Again, Stone Skin is absolutely fantastic for protection, so this is a great power to have. You can summon a monster and heal, which basically takes one friendly uh, creature and wipes out everything that could possibly be wrong with them uh, unless it was it's a curse but other than that <laughs> it brings them right back up to where you need them to be fantastic all right and then level seven restoration greater obviously very useful and then holy word which does horrible things to non-good creatures um, based upon your caster level and at level eight Legendary Proportions, which is fantastic to <laughs> put on your, your your tank or one of your pets. It does cost a dinosaur bone, though, so keep that in mind. Holy Aura, which gives a fantastic deflection bonus to AC and wards against evil spells and spells created by evil creatures. Very, very powerful stuff. And Protection from Spells, which grants a plus eight resistance bonus for one particular creature. Keep in mind, it does cost 10 diamond dust, um, and it's only for one person. But it is 10 minutes per level, which is bananas. And then finally, level nine, Heal Mass. Heal is fantastic. Being able to put heal on all your party members at the same time, even better. You get a Summon Monster that allows you to summon multiple Boogeymen, Frost Giants, or Mavanic Divas fantastic powerful stuff 
um, and Fortress of the Faithful, which now works on all allies and lasts for a full hour. Basically a room clearer. As opposed to having to keep reapply buffs and do all sorts of crazy stuff, just pop this on and more than likely by the time an hour has finished, <laughs> you will have cleared out the vast majority of the dungeon that you're in with very little scrapes or bruises. Just, just great stuff. Great stuff. Moving on to the next domain, knowledge domain. You are a scholar and a sage of legends. In addition, you treat all knowledge skills as class skills. Void form. You can become semi-tangible as a standard action. While in this form, you are immune to critical hits and gain a plus one deflection bonus to AC. That's pretty cool. Teaching moment. At eighth level, as a swift action, you can grant all allies within 30 feet special insights. Once during the next minute, each affected creature can choose to roll twice and take the better result before attempting an attack roll, ability check, skill check, or saving throw. Law Domain. You follow a strict and ordered code of laws, and in so doing, achieve enlightenment. Touch of Law. You could touch a willing creature as a standard action, infusing it with the power of divine order and allowing it to treat all attack rolls, skill checks, ability checks, and saving throws for one round as if the natural d20 roll resulted in an 11. Staff of Order. At 8th level, you can give a weapon you touch the axiomatic special weapon quality for a number of rounds equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Liberation Domain. You are a spirit of freedom and a staunch foe against all who would enslave and oppress. You have the ability to ignore impediments to your mobility. For a number of rounds per day equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain, you can move normally regardless of magical effects that impede movement, as if you are affected by freedom of movement. This effect occurs automatically as soon as it applies. These rounds do not need to be consecutive. Freedom's Call. At 8th level, you can emit a 30-foot aura of freedom for a number of rounds per day equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Luck Domain. You are infused with luck and your mere presence can spread good fortune. Bit of Luck. You can touch a willing creature as a standard action, giving it a bit of luck. For the next round, anytime the target rolls a d20, she may roll twice and take the more favorable result. Divine Fortune. At 6th level, as a standard action, you can bless yourself with Divine Luck. For the next half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain, rounds you roll two times on every d20 roll and take the best result. That sentence doesn't seem to make sense, but we're going to roll with it. Madness Domain. You embrace the madness that lurks deep in your heart and can unleash it to drive your foes insane or to sacrifice certain abilities to hone others. Vision of Madness. You can give a creature a vision of madness as a melee touch attack. Choose one of the following, attack rolls, saving throws, or skill checks. The target receives a bonus to the chosen rolls equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain, and a penalty to the other two types of rolls equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Aura of Madness. At 8th level, you can emit a 30-foot Aura of Madness for a number of rounds per day equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Enemies within this Aura are affected by confusion unless they make a will save with a difficulty class equal to 10 and a half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain plus your Wisdom modifier. Magic Domain. You are a true student of all things mystical and see divinity in the purity of magic. Hand of the Acolyte. You can cause your melee weapon to fly from your grasp and strike a foe before instantly returning. As a standard action, you can make a single attack using a melee weapon at a range of 30 feet. Dispelling Touch. At 8th level, you can use a targeted dispel magic effect as a melee touch attack. Nobility Domain. You are a great leader, an inspiration to all who follow the teachings of your faith. Inspiring word. As a standard action, you can speak an inspiring word to a creature within 30 feet. That creature receives a plus two morale bonus on attack rolls, skill checks, ability checks, and saving throws for a number of rounds equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Inspiring Command. At 8th level, you can issue an inspiring command to your allies who must all be within 30 feet of you. Affected allies gain a plus 2 insight bonus on attack rolls, AC, CMD, and skill checks for a number of rounds equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. 
This is a language dependent, mind affecting effect. So at level one, we have color spray, which affects all creatures in a particular cone doing different effects. Protection from chaos, which again is very helpful. Divine favor, giving you a luck bonus and remove fear along with cause fear. And the rest of these, I believe we've already went over. Cacophonous call. This was in Kingmaker, I believe. You fill your target's mind with a blaring cacophony of discordant sounds, causing them to become nauseated if they fail a wheel save. Fox's Cunning adds an intelligent bonus. Protection of Chaos Communal, obviously very helpful. And then the rest of these are standard spells we've already went over. You get Rage, Sea Invisibility, Communal, very, very helpful, very nice. Prayer, Remove Curse, the rest of these we've went over already. Heroism, I mentioned before, the plus two morale bonus, very nice. Death Ward, Confusion is awesome as well, especially since it affects all creatures, so it allows you to impact several enemies at once. Protection from Energy and Freedom of Movement. We've already talked about Dominate Person, Break Enchantment, Spell Resistance, and True Seeing. Feeble Mind, Targets creatures intelligence and charisma scores each drop to one devastating depending upon the type of enemy that you're facing brilliant inspiration open a link between you and the subject's mind uh, each time the subject of the spell makes an attack roll ability check or skill check it rolls two d20s and takes a better result very cool stuff uh, allows you to put a plus four enhancement bonus to dexterity for your entire party or you can do the same thing for intelligence for your entire party. Very nice. Distel Magic Grader. Does it within a 20-foot burst. Blade Barrier. Evocation. Does straight damage. And Phantasmal Killer. You can create a phantasmal image of the most fierce creature imaginable. They must succeed a 42 save or die from fear. Rough. <laughs> Heroism greater, one minute per level. Obviously, this is absolutely fantastic. Insanity is great. Elemental body allows you to take on either a huge air, earth, fire, or water elemental. Power word blind and dictum, which affects any non-lawful creature. Now let's switch over to plant. You find solace in the green. You can grow defensive thorns and can communicate with plants. Enlarge. It's a swift action. You can enlarge yourself for one round as if you were the target of the enlarged person spell. Bramble armor. At sixth level, you can cause a host of wind thorns to burst from your skin as a free action. While bramble armor is in effect, any foe striking you with a melee weapon without reach takes 1d6 points of piercing damage plus one point per two levels you possess in the class that gave you access to this domain. Protection domain. Your faith is your greatest source of protection and you use that faith to defend others. In addition, you receive a plus one resistant bonus on saving throws. This bonus increases by one for every five levels you possess. Resistant touch. As a standard action, you can touch an ally to grant them your resistant bonus for one minute. When you use this ability, you lose your resistant bonus granted by the protection domain for one minute. Aura of Protection. At 8th level, you can emit a 30-foot aura of protection for a number of rounds per day, equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. You and your allies within this aura grain a plus 1 deflection bonus to AC and resistance 5 against all elements. Repose Domain. You see death not as something to be feared, but as a final rest and reward for a life well spent. The taint of undeath is a mockery of what you hold dear. Gentle rest. Your touch can fill a creature with lethargy, causing a living creature to become staggered for one round as a melee touch attack. If you touch a staggered living creature, that creature falls asleep for one round instead. Ward against death. At 8th level, you can emit a 30-foot aura that wards against death for a number of rounds per day equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Living creatures in this area are immune to all death effects, energy drain, and effects that cause negative levels. Rune domain. In strange and eldritch runes, you find potent magic. Blast room. As a standard action, you could create a blast room in a desired location. Any creature entering a five foot area around the room takes 1d6 points of damage plus one point for every two levels you possess in the class that gave you access to this domain. 
warding rune. At eighth level, you could create a warding rune in a desired location. Any creature entering a five foot area around the room must make a will save or they will not be able to attack for a number of rounds equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Strength Domain In Strength and Brawn there is truth. Your faith gives you incredible might and power. Strength Surge As a standard action, you can touch a creature to give it great strength. For one round, the target gains an enhancement bonus equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Might of the Gods At 8th level, you add half of your level in the class that gave you access to this domain as an enhancement bonus to your athletics checks. Sun Domain you see truth in the pure and burning light of the sun and can call upon its blessing or wrath to work great deeds. Sun's blessing. Whenever you channel positive energy to harm undead creatures, add your level in the class that gave you access to this domain to the damage dealt. Nimbus of Light. At 8th level, you can emit a 30-foot Nimbus of Light for a number of rounds per day, equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Any hostile creature within this radius must succeed at a fortitude save to resist the effects of this aura. If the creature fails, it is blinded until it leaves the area of the spell. Travel Domain You are an explorer and find enlightenment in the simple joy of travel, be it by foot or conveyance or magic. Increase your base speed by 10 feet. Agile Feet As a free action, you can gain increased mobility for one round. For the next round, you ignore all difficult terrain and do not take any penalties for moving through it. Dimensional Hop At 8th level, you can teleport up to 10 feet per level in the class that gave you access to this domain per day as a move action. The teleportation must be used in 5 foot increments and such movement does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Alright, starting from level 1. Enlarge Person uh, Absolutely fantastic to put on your pet or on a tank. Fairy Fire. You can cause all creatures within a 5-foot burst to take a negative 20 penalty on all stealth checks. Interesting. Long Strider makes your base speed significantly faster, but since it doesn't apply to the whole party, I didn't find it all that useful. Uh, protection from whatever your alignment is. Entangle, um, which affects all creatures within a 40-foot burst, causing grass, weeds, and other plants to wrap around them. And I think it slows them and or it tangles them and it forces you to have to break free by making a combat maneuver check. And then finally, Doom. The spell fills a single subject with a feeling of horrible dread that causes it to become shaken. Protection from arrows, bark skin, which provides some natural armor, very useful on some of your party members. Um, bull strength, we talked about. Scare, all. Targeted living creatures um, become shaken. Uh, your movement does not provoke attacks of opportunity, and you can see invisible people. Protection from air is communal. Very, very helpful. Feather step. Again, if there were more situations where there's difficult terrain, this might be useful, but I didn't encounter very many of them, to be honest. And the rest we went over. Uh, enlarge all of the people within your party. Very awesome. Thorn body causing you to have spikes all over, damaging any creatures that try to attack you. Very cool. Uh, dimension door allowing you to transfer all of your party to another spot. Very, very cool. There are many times in this game where they will try to bottleneck you into a particular doorway while spellcasters and archers pelt at you from behind the tanks. So if you could take your whole party in and then just land in the middle of the room and wipe out all the the creatures in the back, very good stuff, very helpful. And then Shield of Dawn, um, any creature that strikes you in melee deals normal damage, but also takes 1d6 fire damage. Cool stuff. Level 5, Righteous Might. Your height immediately doubles and your weight increases by a factor of 8. And it gives you several boosts while also taking a penalty to your dexterity. And Vine Trap. So it takes 2d4 points of piercing damage each turn from the sharp thorns. And the person also becomes paralyzed and entangled. Very cool stuff. B shape. You become a large shambling mound. Wow, that's the first time I've seen that. That actually sounds pretty cool. You can get an elemental body of air. Stone skin, stone skin communal. Chains of light, allowing you to hold a particular creature. 
Dispel Magic Greater, and Undeath to Death. He calls Diamond Dust, and for all enemies within a 40-foot burst, it'll slay 1d4 HD worth of undead creatures, while creatures with more than 9 HD take 100 damage instead. Very nice. Change Staff changes an ordinary quarterstaff into a tree ant creature. It appears when you designate and acts according to its initiative check results. That sounds pretty cool. So you you sacrifice a quarter staff and they create this thing. Wow, I haven't seen something like that before. Um, summon air elemental. Sunbeam. As a standard action, you can create a sunbeam that damages undead and blinds creatures permanently. And that's all for these particular domains. All right, now we finally come to the last few domains. Trickery domain. You are a master of illusions and deceptions. Trickery and stealth are class skills. Copycat. You can create an illusory double of yourself as a move action. This double functions as a single mirror image and lasts for a number of rounds, equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain, or until the illusory duplicate is dispelled or destroyed. Master's Illusion. At 8th level, you can make yourself and any number of allies within 30 feet invisible for one round per level in the class that gave you access to this domain. War Domain. You are a crusader for your god, always ready and willing to fight to defend your faith. Battle Rage. You can touch a creature as a standard action to give it a bonus on melee damage rolls equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. I'm going to assume that part of this description is missing. In fact, let me... Water Domain. You can manipulate water and mist and ice. Conjure creatures of water and resist cold. Icicle. As a standard action, you can fire an icicle from your finger, targeting any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. The icicle deals 1d6 points of cold damage plus 1 point for every two levels you possess in the class that gave you access to this domain. Cold resistance. At 6th level, you gain resist cold 10, and that continues to increase up to level 20. And finally, we have Weather Domain. With power over storm and sky, you can call down the wrath of the gods upon the world below. Storm Burst. As a standard action, you can create a storm burst targeting any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. The storm burst deals 1d6 points of damage plus 1 point for every two levels you possess in the class that gave you access to this domain. Lightning Lord. At 8th level, as a swift action, you can call down a bolt of lightning. You can call down a bolt of lightning a number of times per day, equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. And looking at the spell book, we have went through all these except for Snowball. You conjure a ball of packed ice and snow that you can throw at a single target as a ranged touch attack. Pretty sure this was in Kingmaker as well. Invisibility. Turn yourself invisible. Call Lightning. Immediately upon completion of the spell and once per round thereafter, you may call down a 6 foot wide, 30 foot long vertical bolt of lightning that deals 3d6 points of electricity damage. The damage is paltry, but the description, on point and fantastic. Makes me want to roll this. Slowing Mud. You coat the targets in thick, sticky mud and cause a slow on those enemies. Nice. Ice Storm. Great magical hailstones pound down upon casting this spell, dealing 3d6 points of bludgeoning damage and 2d6 points of cold damage to every creature in the area. Cloak of Dreams. You are surrounded by a soporific aroma that causes all living creatures within 5 feet of you to make a successful will save or fall asleep for one minute. Interesting. And Cone of Cold. Standard spell. Sirocco. A blast of furnace hot winds blasts downward, inflicting 46 fire damage and one point per caster level to all creatures in the area and knocking them prone. That is pretty cool. Okay. And then finally, level seven. Looks like you don't get anything here that you haven't already seen before. Okay. And that is the full domain list. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't get levels eight and nine for all the domains. This is this is as far as it seems like I can go for 
the beta, but absolutely when we get the full release of the game, I will go back through and because they might make changes to these domains anyway. So I will go back through and do this video again with the complete list of all the different spells. But I felt like at the very least, doing this video would give you an idea of what kind of spells would be available to you based upon the domain that you picked and help you figure out what kind of character you would like to roll first once the game comes out. Um, please leave your feedback in the comments below. Like and let me know what other videos you'd like me to do. Talk to you all soon.